Welcome back. It's nice to see you again. In today's episode, we're going to show you how to make this intro title effect that was used all over the place in Girl Skateboards, Yeah Right, from 2003. This was one of those effects that I could never figure out as a kid, and I think it's pretty easy to reproduce in motion. Now I'm going to start with a 30 frames per second, 20 duration video. Now with this clip, it's only 1080 because it's such an old clip, so we're just going to go ahead and switch that to 1080 as well. All right, now that we have our project set up, first thing we need to do is import our base clip that we're gonna be working with. So we're gonna click import, find the clip. I already have it set up for us. Now you can see what I was talking about. It is a very small clip. So we're going to go over here to our inspector and we're just going to scale this bad boy up just so that it fits. It doesn't have to be perfect for this little demo. Now that we have our group, what we're going to do is we're going to name this one background. We're actually going to end up with a few copies of this same thing. So now that I have this labeled as background, I'm just going to clone it by right clicking and click make clone layer. And this is what's going to be our foreground. Just going to keep our layers tidy, name them foreground so that we can tell the difference. Now the next thing that we need to do to reproduce this effect is we need a freeze frame right as the effect is going to come flying in. Now we're not going to do this colorize effect that we see. I've got videos on that if you want to check that out and we're going to do more in the future so make sure to subscribe if you want to see more colorize effect videos. So if we just come up here to behaviors, retime, and hold frame you'll see that that just holds them in place right where we want. That looks great. Now because we have this cloned, the clone layer actually inherits that hold behavior which is exactly what we want. All right, now that we have a foreground and a background separated, we just need to create a mask around him really quick. Again, we've got tutorials on masking. If you'd like to see more tutorials on masking, let me know in the comments, but that's not the interesting part of this video. So we're gonna go fast on it. Once we have our mask drawn, we're just going to select our clone layer from the foreground and we're gonna say add image mask. We're just gonna drag our Bezier up there. Now you can see if we show and hide some of these layers, we've just cut out our actor as the main thing. And that's because the text is going to fly out from behind him. This is also useful if you were going to do the colorize effect, so you could colorize him separately. All right, next let's draw a path for the text to follow. Really, it doesn't matter too much as long as there's not too much verticality. This effect works better if it's more side to side, but it's really to taste. So if you like the look of more vertical lines than horizontal, that's fine. I just like to make sure they're nice and smooth. Now that I've got it drawn, I'm going to disable the fill and I'm just gonna adjust it so that it's nice and round. Okay, that looks really good. Nice and round shape. I'm just gonna drag this up into its own group and I'm gonna name it Animated Title. And then now that I have these as separated groups, I can collapse that foreground layer. Jumping back into our Animated Title layer, I'm just gonna throw down some text. This is going to be where the person's name comes in. This could be uh, a logo if you wanted, so you can import a PDF and have the logo there, or you can draw a shape, it really doesn't matter. The important thing is we just want this to be centered uh, just to keep our transforms as simple as possible. They're still gonna end up a little bit off and we'll adjust it. And then we wanna make sure that the appearance is right. So let's center this bad boy up and then we're going to add a little bit of an outline. Now you can change the foreground color, so the face there. Um, I'm going to leave it white. I'm just going to add a little bit of a dark orangish red outline. I like the look of keeping the width at one, but you can adjust that if you want, depending on your taste. Now that we have our text drawn and looking right, we're going to hit replicate. We're going to come over here to our replicator and change it to geometry instead of rectangle. We just need to drag that Bezier path up into the source for the geometry and you might be thinking that doesn't look anywhere close to what we want um, but I promise you it will get there real fast. Now it's a little bit off so I'm just going to drag the X and the Y so that they're positioned right in line with our original Bezier path. This doesn't really matter again Technically correct doesn't matter. It's the appearance that we want something that looks really nice And I liked our original line. So I just wanted to line up with that original line Now if we come back to our replicator, this is where it starts to look right We just crank up the points here and you can start to see if we get into the hundreds See that's even right there a cool effect. It's not the exact same effect, but that's a that's a usable effect in my opinion 
Let's keep cranking though until those lines start to disappear and we end up with solid colors. Now I think something in the four to 5,000 range works. I've also seen 9,000 work really well, but that's high enough that it sort of melts my computer. So I'm not going to do that right now just to keep my computer from overheating. Now, the cool thing is that once we have this effect set up, we can actually start doing all sorts of cool tweaks to add some flavor and to make it look more like the original. So let's start by coming over here to some of our replicator parameters. So I want to crank up the scale at the end and I'm going to turn down the scale at the beginning. You can see this is a give and take game, so you just have to go back and forth until you get the look that you want. Now we can also add a little bit of a twist to it. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to even crank this scale up a little bit more as well. Now the cool thing is once we have this set up, we can actually come back and we can make edits. So let's say, for example, I don't exactly like how this text works. Maybe I want uh, his name to be on two lines. Can do that. Can also make it so that text is left aligned. I can even change the line spacing if I want to tighten it up a little bit. We can even come in here and we can change the shape of our Bezier path if we decide we don't really like the shape that it's taking. So I'm just going to grab this. I'm going to squish it in a little bit. I want to try to keep more of the effect on screen. I'm going to try and keep it as curved as possible, but there's this little lip, this little tail on the end that I didn't really like. So I'm going to straighten out that curve. Now we just select our replicator and drag the Bezier back on, and it reapplies. All right, I think that looks pretty good. With the two lines now, I think we can go with a little bit more scale. Now, the one thing that I do want to change is I want this to be a little bit overlapping just at the bottom there where his text comes over, just so that you can see how to do this last part of the effect. Now we have this foreground, and if I drag it above, you can see we have the problem where he actually overlaps all of it. And we don't want that to happen. We just want his shoulders to overlap the front part, and we want his legs to be behind the bottom part. So it looks like it's just really coming out and zooming in towards the camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another clone of this foreground layer. Now this clone is just going to be the shoulders part. So we're going to call this the foreground clone and I'm going to drag it up above. Now you can see it overlaps too much again. So I'm going to expand this group and I'm just going to draw a Bezier path really quick. Just around the head and shoulders. I'm going to select the whole group. I'm going to go object, add image mask and drag the Bezier path onto it. Just like we did before. Now that I've got everything masked just right, we can go ahead and turn on and off layers and you can actually see how the overlapping is working. We have the one foreground layer that is behind everything and then we just have the head and shoulders that are in front of the top. Just a little layering magic trick there to get a 3D effect when paths and replicators don't really support 3D uh, the way that we'd like. Even though this still frame looks like the effect we want, it's not animated. So I'm going to come back in here to the replicator and I'm going to show you this opacity gradient. So you can see if I click and I add a new spot on the opacity and I just turn that opacity down to zero, it turns black. You can see that I can move it back and forth and it has that animated effect we want. And if I want to eat up some of this blur, I can just use this midpoint parameter to just scoot it over there and make it a little tighter, a little crisper at the end. Now this is a little tricky, and so we're going to do our keyframes in a certain order. So I'm just gonna step forward like 15 frames here, and I'm going to click on our final point, and I'm just going to click a keyframe on opacity and on location. Now we need both of these. This is sort of the final pivot point here where the final effect is gonna snap crisp. Now if we just go back to the beginning, I'm going to take our point and I'm just going to change the location to 1. Now that will shrink it all the way back so that it's just behind his head. Now you can see if we step through our timeline here, it has the effect that we want more or less, but it just looks too blurry because there's still that gradient happening. So to tighten up the gradient, what we need to do is we need to grab that little middle arrow and tighten it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our last keyframe, step forward one frame, and then dial up the opacity to 100% on our last frame. So that'll make it so that there is no more black in our gradient. Now that we have it so that it snaps to completely 
opaque at the end, we're going to go backwards a keyframe and we're going to mess with our middle. So we're going to set the middle at 99 at what our previous last frame was. And then we're going to go to the very beginning of our animation and we're going to set the middle at zero. So you can see as we step forward, it has sort of a motion blur as it comes flying out. And then as we get closer to the end, it tightens up and the text becomes clear. Now if we want, we could step through each of these keyframes and just tighten up that middle a little bit. We can also just go to the beginning and set the keyframe to like 0.5 or something like that. Just get it a little bit closer. But the idea here is we want it just barely behind the other part of our gradient so that it still has a little bit of blur, but it stays nice and crisp. Now from here, you can do all sorts of stuff. You have all the tools to make this animation really your own. You can tweak the angle, you can add more layers of text coming out. You can actually animate the start and end of the animated gradient. So if you want it to zoom in and then zoom out, like if you want it to fly overhead of the camera, you can even import your own custom symbols or shapes as PDFs. Or if you have Pixelmator, you can draw your own shapes in Pixelmator and send them over to Apple Motion, and you can animate those in the same way. If you enjoyed this one, please like and subscribe. It really does mean the world to me. If you have another effect, a transition, or a title from a skate video, a YouTuber, or maybe a movie that you would like to see me reproduce, please let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure to make that happen for you. I've got lots of videos coming down the line, so if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so that you can see those great videos. I'm going to show you a couple more YouTuber intros and titles, as well as a couple more skate video effects, uh, maybe getting into a little compositing and green screen even. Alright, I'll catch you on the next one.